In this session, we are going to look at the hope of Israel. Now, one of the things that's been going on in theological circles, especially in the fulfilled movement these days, is the idea or the thinking and theology that salvation ceased in AD 70. Now, I believe that AD, AD 70 was the fulfillment of Christ's coming in judgment against Israel and Jerusalem, and specifically to destroy the temple, to the outward vindication of Christ's sacrifice. And uh, of course, we know that the veil was torn in two when Christ died, but the Pharisees continued to offer up sacrifices, which was the height of blasphemy. And that's one of the reasons the idea of uh, reinstituting sacrifices in a supposed future millennial kingdom uh, is so, uh, so abominable. It really is. And yes, I used to believe it, and it's just an abomination. Christ put an end to sacrifice by his once-for-all sacrifice. Um, the, the book of Hebrews is explicitly clear on that idea. Um, so what we need to do, though, to um, counter this horrible theological movement of complete cessation in AD 70 is show from the Bible that salvation was to come to Israel, but it also would come to the Gentiles. But what's important to note is the phrase, the hope of Israel. That's extremely, extremely important to this discussion. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at several passages uh, that, with, with no uncertain terms, describes this hope of Israel. Jeremiah 17, verse 13, O Lord, the hope of Israel, all that forsake you shall be ashamed, and they that depart from me shall be written in the earth, because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. Uh, Joel 3, verse 16, the Lord shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem and the heavens and the earth shall shake, but the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. Psalm 130 says, let Israel hope in the Lord for with the Lord, there is mercy and with him plentiful redemption. Okay, so we see this great hope for Israel that God would one day bestow mercy upon them through Christ and he would redeem them, plenteous redemption. Uh, Psalm 131 verse 3, let Israel hope in the Lord from this moment and forever. Well, now we'll turn to the New Testament to continue this idea of the hope of Israel. Acts 28 verse 17 through 20, it came to pass that after three days, Paul called for the chief of the Jews together. And when they had come together, he said to them, Men and brethren, I have committed nothing against the people or the customs of our fathers, yet I was delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans, who, when they had examined me, would have let me go because there was no cause of death in me. But when the Jews spoke against it, I was constrained to appeal to Caesar. Not that I had ought to accuse in my nation of, for this cause... Therefore, I have called for you to see you, to speak with you, because that for the hope of Israel, I am bound with this chain. So even Paul, who was a minister to the, or to the uncircumcision, the Gentiles, he still, his, his heart was heavy, Romans chapter 9, for his kinsmen according to the flesh, the Israelites. He still, even though he was preaching to the Gentiles and going throughout uh, basically um, Southern Europe on his missionary journey, uh, he still had this hope for Israel. That was a huge part of every Israelite and Jew who was studying um, their Old Testament. In Acts chapter 23, Paul, when Paul perceived one part were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he cried out in the council, Men and brethren, I am a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee, of the hope of the resurrection of the dead, I am called into question. So the resurrection of the dead is specifically tied to Old Testament believers who were Israelites, okay? The, the resurrection of the dead applied to them. Acts chapter 26, but he calls it a hope, the hope of the resurrection of the dead. Acts 26, 6, and now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise. So we see those key words, hope and promise made to our fathers by God. So sure enough, these promises were made to the fathers, and the hope, and they were, they were directed toward Israel beyond a shadow of a doubt. There's, there's no doubt about that. So those who try to argue for a replacement theology and, and, tr and trying to insert 
uh, the spiritual nation of God, the holy nation, the church, in all of these contexts, uh, both in the Old and New Testament, it's just uh, bankrupt. It really is. Uh, and I dabbled in it for a little while, uh, but you know, you, you just sometimes you gotta look at the scriptures instead of um, a reformed dogma that was held for so long. And of course, this was also taken from Roman Catholicism and, and even uh, some Orthodox um, branches. So God, uh, Paul says, this is Acts 26, verse 6 through 8. And now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made to God. We just read that under our fathers. Unto which promise our 12 tribes, very important, instantly serving God day and night, hope to come. For which hope's sake, King Agrippa, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? So again, Paul is associating the hope of Israel with the resurrection. So the resurrection and the hope of Israel were tied together. But spe specifically, resurrection applies to old dead guys, <laughs> right? Specifically those in Israel who are believers. So when Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life, he who believes in me, though he were dead, Old Testament believers, yet shall he live. He was looking, he, he promised the resurrection of those Old Testament believers. And Hebrews speaks about them saying, these all died in faith, having not received the promise, God having provided something better for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Okay, so th that was the resurrection, bringing them up out of the dead. But then Jesus says this, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Resurrection. He who lives and believes in me, shall never die. Life. Okay? Same redemptive blessings, but one is a resurrection after these guys had already passed away. That's why Jesus said, whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. We will never die. They would never die. Those who were living at the time of Christ would never die. And there's definitely a distinction you see being made between the Jewish believers in the first century versus the Gentile believers in the first century. Because the Jewish believers were promised that they, through much tribulation, would enter the kingdom of God. No such promise was ever made, if you can call it a promise, but it really was. Um, I believe it's uh, Acts chapter 13 where, where Paul speaks about that. Well, now we get to this passage that's very clear about a hope. Now, the specific hope was to Israel. Romans chapter 9, I say the truth in Christ, verses 1 through 4. I do not lie, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and sorrow in my heart continually. For I could wish that I myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh who are Israelites, to whom, now listen, pertains the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. Now, the, what's interesting is we're about to see is the law was never given to the Gentiles. He says, as for the nations, they have not known them. Okay, they had never known. God never gave the law to the nations. But it says the giving of the law and the adoption, the glory, the covenants and the giving of the law. And of course, the promises, the service of God and the promises. Those were all given to the Israelites. Now, watch what God says here in Ephesians chapter 2. Therefore, remember that you being in time past Gentiles. And this is for those people who like to say that Gentiles is referring to Israelites. Paul says, therefore, remember that you being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who were called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision in the flesh by hands, that at that time you were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Okay, so he describes the hope of Israel very clearly. He says, to whom pertain glory, covenants, giving of the law, service of God, and the promises. Okay, so this is to the Israelites. But yet there's this group of people today who like to say that all these references to Gentiles, all of them in the New Testament are referring to Israelites. And so there was the hope of Israel to whom pertain that hope and promises and the giving of the law and the glory and the covenants. But he said, Paul says to the true pure Gentiles, he says, you were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope. It would make no sense for Paul to say that to the Gentiles if they were Israelites because Paul knew that the hope of Israel pertained to the Israelites. 
It didn't pertain to the Gentiles. But now he says, you who are far off are what? Made near by the blood of Christ. So this issue of the hope of Israel versus pure Gentiles is very important. Uh, we, we mustn't use bad exegesis and, um, and, and decontextualization. We, we just can't do that. We can't twist it. And, and that's what those who uh, believe in the AD 70 complete cessation doctrine do. Um, they, they just destroy the scriptures. They destroy any uh, contextual um, cohesiveness and, and, and continuity. They just, they just like to take one word and one instance of Romans chapter um, 9 later on with Hosea 1, which I agree, it does. It, refer, it takes the Gentiles and it refers to them as those were the Israelites of Hosea 1. But you can't do that with all the scripture. You just can't. You can't do it. Just like the word world. For the most part in the book of John, the word world, cosmos, definitely refers to that Jewish order, okay? And the Mosaic order. But it doesn't always refer to that. We just have to be very careful. And, and, and not to mention, we're going to see so many other reasons why salvation continues and eternal life and the everlasting gospel continues today to the seed of Abraham. And we're going to find out what that seed is later.